Fantastic Four issue 10 sees Val text her friends in the Future Foundation, who are on the edge of the multiverse trying to find Molecule Man. While they don't text back, Val tells them how bored she is, saying she can't see many stars from the street, but she has been working on her transmitter as she is spied on by Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, who have come to check on all of the power being generated by the Fantastic Four building. Down in Yancey Street, Johnny finds Franklin burning some books in his room. Stopping the fire, he finds it to be Franklin journal, where he's been drawing the things that come to life. Franklin says that since they have all been destroyed, there's no point in keeping the book. Johnny says that he came to him because there is a family meeting taking place, and Franklin needs to be there. Heading to the kitchen, the two meet with the rest of the family, where they plan on talking with Val and Franklin about their current behaviour, like taking advantage of the fact that Alicia's blind, and them destroying Uncle Jake's truck to make a teleporter and flying machine. Reed agrees that they need to come up with an appropriate punishment for them, but Franklin finds it unfair, since if it wasn't for them, they wouldn't be alive and be here on Yancey Street, so they should all be thanking him. Sue wonders how Alicia and Ben want Franklin to make amends for what he's done, and Ben says he has some ideas. The next day, Ben tells Franklin that he will be spending the next few days giving back to the community and helping out at the Grimm Youth Centre. Franklin isn't too happy about it, and as he's cleaning up, some of the kids approach him, thinking he's too good for them because he's part of the Fantastic Four family. One of the kids thinks that he should be taught a lesson, and Franklin tells him that he's created planets and people, so he really shouldn't be picking on him. Franklin decides they aren't worth his time as the kids begin picking on him again. Ben and Mr. Shekerberg arrive, breaking up the argument as the kids leave, their leader warning Franklin that Ben won't be around next time to save him. Franklin sarcastically calls the neighborhood a friendly place, leaving as Ben wonders what they are doing wrong with Frank and Val. Mr. Shekerberg Berg says that they haven't been around much since they moved in, much less a chance to say hello to everyone. Ben knows his friend is right and there is one way to fix that, a classic Yancey Street block party. Setting up the giant party, the street is introduced to Reed and Sue and their family, who meet with Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur and her parents, getting on well with them. Franklin meets Izzy, who wonders if he is Sue and Reed's stepchild, since he doesn't act like them or look like any of them. Franklin says that it's for the best that he doesn't look or act like any of them, since he isn't staying in the Fantastic Four, since he can't do anything for them now. The two begin to get along when suddenly the street is attacked by Malachus' invasion force of New York. The heroes don't stand around, getting right into the action and fighting the invasion for disrupting their block party. As Johnny pushes them out of the block, Sue erects a shield around Yancey Street. Alicia herds people into the safe house in the Fantastic Four HQ as the Frost Giants try and get back into the shield. Getting on their working communications devices, the team wonder why the giants are so intent in getting into Yancey Street. The people of the street assemble, grabbing weapons and telling Sue to drop the field, since no one messes with Yancey Street. Sue drops the shield and the people take the fight to the giants, but are soon overwhelmed. They don't back down, however, getting back up and making Franklin realise that this is where Ben gets his ethics from, and he wants to be part of the team as well, activating his powers and fighting the giants, using up all of his leftover powers until nothing is left. Knocked down to the ground, he is found by the bullies, who back him up, saying that he's from Yancey Street and he doesn't need no fancy superpowers. Val soon realises what they are coming for on Yancey Street, the super antenna that she has built on top of the building. Since it's what's keeping their comms online and whatever the invasion force is, it includes a media blackout. Franklin wonders if they should destroy it, so he does, making Val upset since he is always destroying her stuff. With the tower destroyed, the frost giants leave and the Fantastic Four suit up, but wonder if they should leave the kids in Yancey Street. Val and Franklin are already ahead of her, suiting up as well, saying the question that they should be asking is, is it safe for Yancey Street if they aren't there? The kids say that they will hold the street while their parents leave to help the Avengers and the rest of the city. Val meanwhile texts the Future Foundation, telling them that she can definitely now see the stars on Yancey Street. Fantastic Four issue 10 was quite a rare comic to see these days, which is that it was a tie-in to a big summer event Event, but also a comic readers who aren't into big comic events or aren't reading that event to actually be able to pick up and actually know what's happening. The event stuff and the normal Fantastic Four stuff was really weaved together very well and logically as well. I love the team finally getting to hang out on Yancey Street and meet all of the people who live there, 
while also having Franklin learn a little bit about what makes the street special and how it's molded people like Ben Grimm into the caring and strong person he is. It's really cool and I'm really interested to see what their role on the street will be, especially since we now know that there's going to be a tie-in book to Yancey Street. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my newest video. If you enjoyed it, you might also like to check out my other reviews here on my channel. You can also follow me on various social media platforms like Twitter by searching Matt underscore FOS or even join the Comic Multiverse Discord server and chat with other comic book fans including myself and Joel from Cape Joel. Want cheap comics and trades? Head over to the book depository with the link in the description to get the cheapest trades and comics around, along with free shipping anywhere in the world. Until next time, this has been Matt of the Fortress of Solitude, thank you so much for watching.